Hello everyone, Dr. Stevens here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, the writing assignment that we call Annotated Bibliography. Uh, before we begin, you might notice uh, a picture of a house there on your screen. So in case you're wondering what that's doing there, first of all, I didn't want to leave the picture space blank because it's just kind of yuck. Um, and I thought that since you probably know that I live in Maine, you might be interested in seeing the house I live in. Anyway, that's my house in Maine. All right, now on with the important stuff. So the annotated bibliography. I want to talk about this uh, in terms of three different things. I want to talk about the relationship between the bibliography and your research project overall. I want to talk a little bit about preparation for the bibliography assignment and then finally we'll go over the assignment itself. Before we do that, however, I would like to just take a quick look at what you are actually producing. This is the product. So when you go to turn it in on October 13th when the assignment is due or sometime before then, when you go to turn it in to turn in the assignment, this is what your assignment should look like. And when I grade your assignment, this is what I'm going to be looking for. So first of all, you'll see here on the screen, you'll see the title page. So the title page has, first of all, obviously a title. And your title should be similar in format. This title happens to run annotated bibliography for research on the causes of animosity etc etc your title is going to be annotated bibliography for research on whatever your topic is right and then according to uh, APA manuscript format you'll include your name uh, you'll include the date and you'll include the um, actually, this format that I'm showing here, look, I, I need to explain. Sorry about this, folks, because this can be confusing. There, there are no hard and fast rules about what goes on a title page in APA manuscript format. So you will see, you will see different, uh, different information that's required, but all title pages will look like this in general. That is, first of all, the text will be centered the way it is here. It will include a title. It will include your name. And then depending upon what particular guidelines you're following, it would include, um, could include the name of the institution, could include the date. And what I'm going to do here is... Since we've gotten into this already, I'm going to look this up. Okay, well, the format, the format that you have in your textbook, and I'm looking at the Little Seagull Handbook on page 188. Okay, so that particular format uh, includes, in addition to the title, it includes only the author's name, that's your name, obviously, and then the name of the institution, Coppin State University. You can use the format that you're seeing here, folks, or you can use that format that you see on page 188 in the little seagull. But whatever you do, make sure that it includes a title. Make sure that it includes your name. All right? That's essential. Now, so that's the first thing. I just want to, what we're doing, we're just looking at the overall appearance of the product, title page. Then the next thing you see is you see an introduction. Um, now, you aren't absolutely required to use the exact kind of wording that we use here, but I recommend it, especially if you've never done this kind of thing before. The whole purpose of the intro is to tell 
Oh gosh. Well, I'm having trouble with my inking tool. So let me try again. But the whole purpose of the introduction, and that's this thing here, okay? Whole purpose of the intro is simply to tell your reader what this bibliography is. All right? So we call this the introduction. It is specified in these assignment requirements. And this is one way to do it. I recommend this. If you can think of other ways to introduce it, that's fine. But just remember that this little paragraph at the beginning here must tell the reader two important things. Okay, it needs to tell the reader uh, what the research project is, what, in other words, what the subject of the bibliography is. All right, the subject of the bibliography is a research project and then tell us what that research project is. Now in this particular case, it's the hostility between Native Africans and African Americans. Okay, well your topic obviously is going to be different. So that's the first thing. Tell us that this is a bibliography about a particular research project and tell us what that research project is. And then tell us what the focus of the research is in terms of your research question. This researcher asks, what are the causes of the hostility? Okay, or this research focuses on the following question. What are the causes of the hostility and so on? And then, and then a little bit about the focus then of the research itself. All right, so you might think, well, what conclusions do I hope to arrive at? Okay. And then say something about those conclusions. Investigates the possibility that relations between the two groups are often strained because and so on. All right. Title page, introduction, and then a list of references. Now, this is the bibliography part. We need a list of references. We need at least five of them. And they need to be in APA format. And we're talking about documentation format. So, and this is simply what it looks like. We're going to go into more detail about this later on, all right? So I'm not going to go through everything right now, but just please notice, this is what it looks like. So when you turn in your bibliography, you're thinking to yourself, well, Dr. Stevens is going to be looking for certain things. Dr. Stevens is going to be looking for this title page. He's going to be looking for this introduction, and he's going to be looking for this list of references that includes at least five. If you have more references, that's fine. Let's talk then about the relationship between the bibliography and research. Now, as you can probably tell from what I've already said about that introduction, you have a research project the research project focuses on a particular topic, right? And it also has what we call a research question, right? Now, this is simply the question that you are asking about that topic, all right? So your topic might be, say, uh, single moms raising boys all right so that's the topic single mothers raising boys raising male children all right that's the topic you've got a research question and there are lots of different questions you could be asking about any particular topic right so let's say your topic is single moms raising boys and the research question is what is the effect on a boy as he's growing up 
of being raised by a single mom. Okay, so what's the relationship between the bibliography and this research question? All right, you're looking for sources of info that answer the question, right? It's as simple as that. You are looking for information that answers that question. You want to know what the effect on boys is, all right? Or effects. It could be more than one effect, obviously. So you're looking for information that's going to tell you something about what it's like for boys to be uh, raised by single moms. Okay. So you're looking for those sources. You've got a topic. You've got a research question. And you need then information that's going to answer that question. The information then goes in, or the sources, okay, the information is in the sources, sorry about that. The information is in the sources, and the sources go in the annotated bibliography. It's as simple as that. Okay, so preparation for the bibliography assignment. The prep is unit unit four all right workshop unit four and workshop four so i think i've got something about this in the uh, explanation of the assignment under sources all right so, the assignment is keyed to course unit 4, finding data. The so and so that's what you're doing in workshop 4. You are working on finding those sources of information that answer your research question. You find those sources, you post them in the workshop on finding data. And those sources, Okay, the workshop four, workshop four sources are the same as, equal to the bibliography sources. Okay, so the sources that you find in your work for the unit, that is the workshop, are the same ones that go in your bibliography. Assuming they meet the criteria for the bibliography assignment, all right? But we're going to assume for uh, all intents and purposes that they do. I don't think there should be a problem there. And in my experience with this assignment, there usually is never any kind of question about whether the sources that you're listing do qualify. However, there are issues with, sorry about that, there are issues with the format that the sources go in in the bibliography. All right? The format is important. And again, as I said earlier, this is doc, APA documentation format. Please follow this format. Before you turn your bibliography in, please check to make sure it looks like this. Okay, so we're going to check. Check. It's got a heading called References. All right. Check. It has five references, etc., at least. And these references are in APA format. We are also using APA Manuscript. MS stands for manuscript. Manuscript format. What is that format? Okay, for, so that format includes hanging indentation. This, folks, is hanging indentation. You can see it more clearly. If we go to something I haven't marked up in red yet, 
All right. First line. First line is at the margin. All the other lines indented. This is not a lecture on word processing, folks, so I'm not going to go into the details of how you set hanging indentation on your word processor. I'm just going to say do not indent by using the tab key. Do not indent by using the space key. Use the hanging indentation function in your word processor. Okay, I'm going to leave it up to you to either call me if you don't know how to do that or find out on your own or maybe you already know how to how to find the indentation functions uh, on your word processor but that's what you need to do the other thing is we're talking again about manuscript format you're going to double space everything in the bibliography and I mean everything all right, everything beginning with this introduction. Two spaces. Everything is double spaced continuously. You never, nowhere in the bibliography do you add spaces. You don't add space here, right? Okay, you don't add space here. That is no space, no extra space between the introduction and the title references or the heading references. No extra space between references and the list itself. No extra space here between one source and the other. No extra space. Everything double space. That's the APA format, okay? Manuscript format. Now, manuscript, that is the way things look in the manuscript itself on the page. That's manuscript format, and that's different from documentation format. All right, very briefly, what do we mean by documentation? All right. And documentation is, in general, just the process of saying what the sources are. What the sources are, that's all you're doing, in general. But there is a specific format for doing that. All right, now I'm messing this up with all kinds of red, so we're going to scroll down a little bit farther here so we can see what format looks like. Please get this right the first time. Because if you get it right the first time, you won't have me harassing you about uh, your format. All right? So, you begin with the author or author's name. Okay, and it could be authors, as in this case. Falola and Afalabi, okay? And now, in this particular source, these authors are the editors. That's fine, okay? If your authors aren't the guys who actually wrote the book, but they edited the book, then you're going to put that EDS, right? But we're looking at the different parts of the source listing. All right. So this is what we call this is what we call the source listing. We're listing sources. Now the source always has a name and you want to get the name right. The source name is always 
author. Okay, now, okay, now the author, I mean, it's the names of the authors, right? It's, it's the names of the individuals, but we're also calling it the name of the source. So the source is named by the name of the authors. But what if you don't have an author or title? And that's if no author. You got that? Please understand these concepts are so simple, so basic, and yet so easy to forget. Always name your source. In naming your source, always use the name of the author. If the source has no author, use the name of the title. Okay, that's the first part. First part. The second part is the date. In parentheses, this is the date of publication. The third part is the title. All right, and and if and now that's the, that's going to be the third part if you have no authors, right? Now you're probably going to ask, okay, well look, the date comes after the name of the authors. Well, what happens if there are no authors? Then the date would come after the title, right? And then publisher. Okay, so simple overall structure. Author, date, title, and publisher. That's your information. You need to have that information in all of your source listings. Now, before we go any farther, Let's take a look at how these sources are listed. That is the listing order. What order are they listed in? Now you're going to tell me probably, oh, Dr. Stevens, that's obvious. It's alphabetical. Okay. Yes. The order listing is alphabetical. No numbers, right? Do not use numbers. Your listing is alphabetical, so we begin with A, right? Okay, we've got another A, and we go to F. I sure hope this comes out right. Okay, then we go to R, alphabetical order, right? And then we go to S for Shaw. So, alphabetical for the order in which sources are listed. Let's go into a little more detail about the format for the sources. So we already know we have an author, right? And we have a title. Now, in APA documentation format only the first word is capitalized so we're going to say caps on first word only okay so disintegration the splintering of black america you're going to say, now wait a minute, Dr. Stevens, we have the capitalized as well. Correct. Why? Because this is a subtitle. So, you are capitalizing the first word of the title, and you're capitalizing the first word of the subtitle. But none of the other words are capitalized. Notice that splintering isn't capitalized. Of black. Oops. America is capitalized because it's a proper noun. So if it's the name of something that is the name of a proper noun, like America, if it is something that normally would be capitalized 
as a proper noun, then you would capitalize it in your title. So if it's somebody's name, if it's the name of a country or a city, and so on. In that case, you would capitalize it. But notice, please, because this is an easy thing to overlook in APA format, normally, I mean, not normally, but in APA format, when you are listing a source, capitalize only the first word of the title and the subtitle. And by the way, why did I put a circle around this? That colon there indicates a subtitle, and that's standard format for titles with subtitles. If your title has a subtitle, then it's going to have a colon. Same thing down here with the other African Americans. And notice again that when we get to proper nouns like African and American, we capitalize, right? Or same thing here with Caribbean. Caribbean's a proper noun. United States also a proper noun. So we capitalize those. Otherwise, only capitalize the first words. Okay. That's format, then, for listing a source in a list of references. Let's talk about annotation. A bibliography, folks, is simply a list of books, magazine articles, newspapers, movies, whatever it might be. A bibliography is simply a list of sources. An annotated bibliography includes a note about that source, and that note is called an annotation. Annotation simply means that we are adding a note to something. So, let's look at an annotation. Annotation then gives us an annotated bibliography. Annotated bibliography just means a bibliography with notes about the sources. What does a note do? All right, let's look at one. This collection, all right, the this simply refers to the source, right? This collection offers a critical examination of issues facing African Americans in the United States as Native Africans uh, that's not a particularly good note in the United States as Native Africans significantly transform the society as well as research on the most prominent issues for Native Africans emigrating to the United States. Okay. All right. I should have cleaned that up a bit. What does a note do? It gives us the subject of the source. Now, unfortunately, this particular annotation doesn't clearly do the other part of, or the other thing that an annotation is supposed to do. And that is to give us some idea of what the main point of the source is. All right, so let's look at this one, because this one does it a little better. This book examines the significant contributions that Native Africans have made in the United States. All right? Okay, good. That's the subject. Now, it also, in addition to giving the subject, it also gives us the main point. or conclusion. What is the main point of the source, or what conclusion or conclusions does the author come to? All right, 
So we've got the subject. Subject is the significant contributions. All right, conclusion is that Native Africans have made an undeniable mark in the U.S. while reconnecting Africa to the New World and leaving behind the stigma of slavery. Now notice, folks, that this is all the annotations need to do. Okay? Annotations, I'm running out of space to write. Annot uh, let's, let's put it down here. Let's put it down here. Annotations do not have to be long. They do not have to be long. Just ask yourself. Just ask yourself, can the reader find out from my annotation? Will the reader understand what the subject is and what the main point is? Subject, one, two sentences, right? And main point. one to two sentences. If your annotation is more than four sentences long, you've got to ask yourself, am I being succinct? Do I know how to accurately summarize what my source is about? Do I know how to accurately summarize what the main point of the source is? So folks, I've gone through the main aspects of the annotated bibliography assignment. All I'm going to do now in conclusion is briefly go over the grading criteria. When you are working on one of my assignments, please be sure that before you submit it, you go through the grading criteria. I always list grading criteria in the assignment instructions Make sure you go through the grading criteria. Use this as a checklist to make sure that you have satisfied all of the assignment requirements. It's a checklist. All right. So, number one, did you submit an annotated bibliography according to the instructions? Okay. Check. If you didn't, okay, you may get a grade of zero. First of all, I mean, that's just the basic assignment. Is is what you are turning in via Turnitin an annotated bibliography? Okay. Does your bibliography include an introduction written according to the instructions? You say to yourself, yep, I've got an introduction, and it looks like it follows the instructions, so check, and that's worth 15% of my grade. All right, you go down to number three. You say, does my bibliography include five sources? Are they related to my research question? And I say, check, and I earn 25%, right? Oops, I've got to have annotations. Okay, do I have annotations of all items in the bibliography? All right, so I do, 20%. Uh, my documentation. Remember that documentation, folks? Did I use correct APA documentation? And I say, yep. I listened to Dr. Stevens' lecture. I got all of that stuff about documentation format. I'm going to get my 25% there. Next on my checklist, format. Did I use manuscript format? including that cover page or title page. And I say, check, yep, I did. I'm going to get 15%. Remember that format, hanging indentation, double spacing, and so on. All right. And finally, did I proofread my work? Did I correct any errors in grammar, spelling, and punctuation, and so on, mechanics? Okay. Now, you don't earn... 
any credit toward your grade for proofreading. That's something you're supposed to do. You did that in English 101. So there's no extra credit for doing a good job of proofreading because that's expected. But make sure you proofread because if there is a really high number of errors in your work, you could lose up to 35%. But you say, yep, I did my proofreading and then I went to the writing lab and I had them proofread it. So there aren't any mistakes in my paper. I'm not going to lose any points. All right, folks. Now, that's an overview of the annotated bibliography assignment. If you have additional questions uh, that I haven't answered here, you can ask your questions in the Unit 4 workshop, Workshop 4, or you can post your questions in a journal message to me. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the workshop.